Mount Calvary Christian School, happy Easter. As you watch this video today, it is Easter Sunday. This past week, we've heard the words of Jesus, words that point to truth, words of deep pain, and even words that showed that on the cross, he was fully God and fully human. Now, you might wonder why focus on the words of Jesus on the cross as we journey to Easter Sunday. Well, the joy of Easter is the sweetest when we remember the bitter cup that Jesus drank from, a cup that made humanity's cause seem in the moment hopeless. Now, I know that at times I felt hopeless. I'm sure you have as well. I remember looking at my math grade where I just received an 18% on a test. I was without hope that I would ever get my grade up again. I remember being behind 9-0 in a soccer game. I was without hope that we'd ever level the score. I remember having a disagreement with a friend and just being without hope that we could ever make it right again. We all know the feeling of being hopeless. Now on this beautiful Easter morning, I want you to just for a second, imagine a feeling of hopelessness and then multiply that times 100. I imagine that's exactly what Jesus' friends and his family and his followers would have felt like. They had seen Jesus be crucified. We actually have accounts of people that saw a Roman crucifixion and responded by throwing up and running away. There was nothing hopeful about Jesus' death on the cross in that moment. But then the first glimmer of hope, like the first ray of sun in the morning came when three women approached the tomb. And when Mary's alarm clock had gone off that morning, she was still filled with sadness. But the empty tomb, the angel that said he's not here, and then Jesus, the Jesus, was alive in the garden. Mary's first Easter day had radically moved from hopeless to hope-filled. And on that moment, for all of Jesus' followers, came rolling in like a snowball off a mountain, hope. What started with the snowflake of God's good news that Jesus was risen turned into an avalanche of hope. An avalanche that covered sinful Peter in forgiveness and love. An avalanche that forced even doubting Thomas to believe. And an avalanche that eventually would turn Paul from persecutor to preacher. It was an avalanche of hope that has thundered to, through 2,000 years of church history and right now is echoing through millions of live streams this morning as we celebrate Easter together, even though it's in a little bit of a different way. As the dust of the excitement and relief and joy settled in for the disciples, they must have realized the enormity of the Easter truth. An empty tomb meant a risen Jesus, and a risen Jesus meant that the relationship between God and man was restored again, and the truth that God and man's relationship is fixed means that all the promises of God will come true for everyone and anyone who believes in that risen Jesus. Now, the Easter story always makes me think of the story of Ben. Little Ben was born severely disabled. He had a hard time speaking and was bound to his wheelchair most days. His parents loved Ben very much and brought him to church faithfully every week, but Ben, because he couldn't speak well, often kind of annoyed his Sunday school teacher, Miss Susan, and the kids around him. He was just a little awkward to be around. But spring came and the kids in Ben's Sunday school class were excited about Easter. Miss Susan told them the story of the resurrection of Jesus. As their homework assignment, all the kids were sent outside with a plastic Easter egg and asked to put something inside of it, something that one way or another connected to the Easter story. The 15 kids filled the small grass field that surrounded the, the church, and 10 minutes later, the Sunday school room was filled again with excitement. All of the kids, Ben included, placed their eggs in a small basket, and then the teacher, Miss Susan, um, picked up the basket and one by one was going to open the eggs. The kids were uh, filled with excitement and they opened up the first egg and uh, they discovered a beautiful flower. Oh yes, life, Miss Susan said. Jesus rose from the grave like flowers from the winter. The next egg had uh, a rock inside of it. But we all know that the stone was rolled away. Great work. In the next egg that Miss Susan opened, uh, she found a delicate little feather. 
Just drop by. Oh, here it is, a delicate feather, uh, talking about how Jesus left the, the grave, um, just like a feather uh, flies off of a bird. Now, all the kids were excited, but there was one more egg. It must have been Ben's, because when uh, Miss Susan opened it, she saw that it was completely empty. Now, Miss Susan didn't want to embarrass Ben and was about to continue her lesson, but suddenly Ben spoke up. Well, aren't you going to talk about my egg, he said. The flustered Miss Susan replied, Ben, your egg is, is empty. Some of the kids laughed, the others snickered. Miss Susan, Ben said, Jesus' tomb was empty too. Jesus was killed and put in there, and then God raised him up. So the egg should be empty on Easter. Miss Susan was blown away. Ben understood more than the other kids and more than even herself that the message of Easter was connected to the empty tomb. All of the beautiful things of spring point us to the truth of the resurrection, but nothing proves the truth of Easter as clearly as the empty tomb did. The moment Jesus left that place, he had completed his mission. He has fixed the relationship with God. He had given all of humanity a pathway to move from hopelessness to being hope filled. Now, the story of Ben is not over yet. The next winter, Ben got very sick. His Sunday school class, including Miss Susan, took turns visiting Ben, but as springtime rolled around, the doctors brought the sad news that Ben was not going to make it. At Ben's funeral, his entire Sunday school class sat on the front row, and after a beautiful message, they got up and one by one placed on the stage in front of the church 15 plastic eggs and if you were standing there on that day and walked over to the stage and peered over into those plastic eggs, you would see that all of the eggs were empty, just like Ben's egg was. They were empty because Ben's sins were forgiven. They were empty because one day Ben would live again. But the main reason why they were empty is because the tomb on Easter morning was empty. The morning of the first Easter, as the bright light of hope began to shine, and throughout the church history, that hope has continued to grow brighter as the influence of Christ's kingdom has grown. The hope of Easter will shine through the best and the worst parts of our life and into an eternity with God in heaven. I love 1 Peter 1 verse 3, where we read that God caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection is the only road to a hope-filled life with Christ, which is why we celebrate Easter today. Hey, Mr. Brussel here. Things are going a little bit different today. You want to go to kahoot.it and you'll have 24 hours to complete this quiz to compete against your fellow MCCS families. The game pin is right here, 01778000. Type that in and you'll be in our 24-hour live quiz.